All right, guys, so in the previous video, we installed TypeScript globally. All right, and we also mentioned that you cannot execute your TypeScript files directly into the browser. And for that matter, you also cannot execute TypeScript files directly in your Node.js environment. Okay, so how does browser work with JavaScript? So we create a JavaScript file, all right, to make our website interactable. And when you load a page, which is this HTML page, all right, it is going to request these resources, index.js and style.css. So style.css is the CSS file which will apply styles to our web page. Okay. So this index.html page will request for index.js and style.css files over the network. Okay. Once the file is downloaded, it is going to compile it and then execute that. Okay. So if the extension of the file is not JS, right, it is simply going to download that file and it is not going to compile and execute that file. All right. So therefore, we have to convert each and every TypeScript file into its respective JavaScript file. Now, I take a step back and there's a problem with this approach. We're going to see that in our future video because, you know, if you have too many JavaScript files, right? Because it's a good practice to separate your code across different modules, different files, right? But when you start downloading those files onto the web page, you are making a lot of requests, right? So which will slow down the performance of your application? And then, I mean, there are different tools which would help us in solving this problem. And one such tool is Webpack. All right, let's come back to the topic. So we know, we agree that we have to convert the TypeScript files into JavaScript files. But hang on, this is a TypeScript series. So I'm not going to write the code directly into index.js. So I'm going to create a file index.ts. Okay, now what is this setup? Okay, so let's go to GitHub once. All right, so I showed you this last time. So in the master branch, we'll have a final project. So you come in here. This is part two of this video series. You select that. So all the code files for this particular video would be found in here. And same way for part three, there would be one more branch that I'm going to add and so on. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've taken this simple index.html file in here we are referencing this css file as you can see then we have this div when we have this element anchor if you click on this so let us also open this site and here if you click on this this will take you to my youtube channel and more specifically on the playlist page when you will see all the playlists that i've created this far right then when you start adding elements in here, all right, and click the add button, we are going to add those elements in here one by one, okay, like I showed you in the previous video. So then this is my second section from where I'm going to in input the employee data, all right, and in here we have this form, and inside that form we have this select item, you can say it as drop down if you're a tester. Right and which contains two values it and non it Okay, then you have got the label and this input field right name and then you can input the age All right, then again another select option Which requests you to specify whether the person that you are entering in here is the head of the department or not Then we have this specific input uh, element which is of type email all right and then we have got two buttons submit and clear all right then at the bottom all right we are also adding in the index.js script all right clear this part great so i'm going to write code inside this index.ts ts stands for typescript that's the extension of typescript files okay now typescript 
is just JavaScript. Okay, so TypeScript starts with JavaScript and ends with JavaScript. TypeScript adopts the basic building block of your program from JavaScript. Hence, you only need to know JavaScript to use TypeScript. All TypeScript code is converted into its JavaScript equivalent for the purpose of execution. Okay. All right. So, what are we going to do? If every code that I write into JavaScript is essentially the TypeScript code, so let's start with variables. Right. So, I'm going to mention in here variables. All right. Let's use const and let. Okay. So, these are ES6. Features okay, so we say const channel name is equal to of course UA box let's test. All right, that is one variable. Then let's use let now. Let h is equal to one. Then we can also use console, right? So I say console log. And then I can log out the name of my channel and the age like that. Next in the list is array, and we are also going to see how can we interact with DOM. So I can say const fruits is equal to square brackets. This is how we define arrays in JavaScript, and we say apple that's item number one at index zero, mango, right? Great. Now I want to work with the DOM elements. So I say const and let us find all the inputs. Okay. I guess there are three. So we can say document dot query selector all. And all I have to say in here is input. All right. So that will give me all the inputs and store that back into this variable, which is inputs. All right. Now, again, let's do console log inputs. Great. Next, let's use the iteration because we have the array now. So I can iterate through this inputs collection. Okay. How can I do that? I say inputs dot for each. Okay. So we got this for each, and then I'll iterate through. Each of the elements there in this input list. So I have to pass in a callback function in here. I say input and like this. So I just say now and so log input. Okay, great. Let's create function as well, right? Special citizen of JavaScript world, right? So let's create a function. So we say const sum is equal to we say return num1 plus num2. Okay, so we have used this pad arrow syntax again, ES6 features, guys. Right, so now I say console so log and I say sum of 1 and 2. Okay, great. So I've written some basic, basic JavaScript code, right, but inside the TypeScript file. Which means that I have to convert this into JavaScript, and that's what we are going to learn in this video. It's pretty simple. Open the terminal, guys. So currently, we have this index.js. Why don't I just delete this? Okay, so that file is deleted. The way you are going to convert a TypeScript file into JavaScript file is using TypeScript compiler, and that's why we installed TypeScript. In the previous video, all right. So we say TSC, which stands for TypeScript Compiler. Now you say, okay, it's important that you run this the root of your project. Otherwise, if you are running it at any specific location, it is going to look out for this file at that location and then to do the specific action. If the file is there, great. If it doesn't there, well, of course, it is not going to work out. All right, now. If I hit enter, I expect index.js to be created. Alright, guys, so we have this index.js file created. Let me open this and let me drag it 
in here okay let me open it side by side okay so what do we see in here so we have const which is being converted to where all right let is also converted to where and this is all es5 javascript right because this works in all the browsers so by default TypeScript compiler converts everything into ES5 format. So in the in the future video, we'll create one file tsconfig.json and we're going to see if I can change this default behavior right from ES5 to the latest greatest JavaScript, right? Which is ES6. Okay, but for now, let's move on with this. So you see that. The code is looking pretty much the same, all right? It's just that it has replaced those constant let with where. And in here also, the fat arrow syntax is gone. Now, guys, you're seeing this error, right? Let's hover over one of the error. And it says this variable age, right, cannot redeclare looks of scoped variable age, all right? Because this age is also declared in the index.js file, so you don't need to worry about it. The moment you close this file, right, that this error is gone. Okay. All right. So now we have to launch this in the browser and see whether all those console statements are logged properly or not. So let's open this. Close the other window. We go to console. And you see, guys, so we have this QA box let's test and one, right? This is the channel name and this is the age. And then we wrote a code to find all the input elements. And we have this array now. And then in here, we iterate through this list, all right? And we printed everything onto the console, which is great. And then this is the outcome of the function, the sum function that we created, right? Great. Now let me do one thing. So what if I say I change this one to ten, okay? And I save this. I go back to my page, okay? Refresh this. Hmm, it's not updated. The thing is, anytime you make a change to your TypeScript file, you have to recompile this into JavaScript, right? So you say, okay, let me do this again. So you do this again, and it's done. Let's go back to the browser, and this time you see 12, right? But, but anytime you make a change, would you like to run it again and again, all right? So in the development environment what we can also do is we can say hyphen w or we can say hyphen hyphen watch okay choice is yours so this is another flag that you can pass in to this typescript compiler guys the first flag that we passed was the name of the file that we transpiled down to the respective javascript file now we are saying that hey compiler anytime i make a change in this file right just reflect that change down to the respective JavaScript file. All right. So I just run this. Okay. And I make a change to this file now. All right. You could see starting compilation. And all you have to do is now you have to save it. So if I now go to the browser, I see 30. Okay. That's a much, much better way. Um, yeah, there, there, there are more ways like, you know, there are certain node modules like, uh, I guess, ts-node and uh, ts-node-dev, all right? Uh, so, rather than you writing like, you know, tsc, the name of the file, right? And then you're kind of executing the JavaScript file, right? What you can say is ts-node and you just give the name of the TypeScript file, all right? And it would do the rest, right? So that ways i mean this is definitely going to help you in the development part but since we are learning typescript from 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 the basics so i'll i'll stick to the typescript part right so uh, let me stop this continuous compilation and show you one more thing so i just press control c and saying yes now so this file wasn't there when i said tsc index dot TS, it created this index.js file, right? What if I want to give a different name? So you can say tsc hyphen 
and you say out file you give the name let's say to test.js and now you say which file so you say index.js fine so you're saying that hey compile this index.js index.ts file sorry into test.js okay so when you hit that a new file should be created in here with the name test.js yeah and it would contain the same thing 1020 okay great so we saw hyphen w we now saw this out file are there more are there more arguments which i can pass to the compiler what these arguments are doing are they are these these arguments are telling compiler to take specific actions so if you want to see the whole list all you have to do is tsc hyphen help right and you see all the different options all right available to you yep so you could see hyphen w or double hyphen watch huh? now there's a problem guys so what if i say Twenty. Okay. Now, what is going to happen? Of course, I have to again start this. Okay. So now I'm going to save this file, and if I go back to the browser, you see, because it was a string, and because of polymorphism, you know, that's the nature of plus right in javascript those characters are concatenated all right now in typescript right we can we can identify this problem at the compile time itself with the help of static typing which we are going to see in the next video but i just showed you the problem that we have in JavaScript, all right. Ideally, this should not be allowed because I expect to perform addition on two numeric values. So, if somebody is passing me non numeric values, I should not perform this operation. And the way we do that is very simple, right? You say colon and you pass in the data type. Okay, now this is called a static typing. All right, and now immediately you see we get this error. Okay, it is not allowing us to do that. So we catch the error at the compile time, and we are going to see more on that. All right, people, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.